Little Dixie here. Today, I wanna give you my thoughts on the pack I've been testing out recently, which is Adam Pack's The Mo EP60. I've used The Mo for my last three backpacking trips, including my trip to Pictured Rocks up in Michigan, the trails I did out in Colorado, and then the treks I did in Iceland. So all of that totals up to over 100 miles. So I feel like I have a pretty good feel for the Mo at this point. I decided to check out the packs from Adam Packs because a lot of y'all suggested that company and said they make good stuff or you had ordered a pack from them and that was your new favorite pack and I'm always up for testing new gear. I decided to go with the Mo and specifically the EP60, which means it has a 60 liter volume because I have a lot of camera equipment, it seems like I'm always adding on something new. So I really need that volume and space for all of my stuff. You may need something smaller or possibly even larger depending on your gear, but I figured this is what would work best for me because even if I had a little bit too much space, I'd rather go with that than have something too small. And I specifically selected the Mo because as Adam Pack says in their description, it's designed with the average through hiker in mind. And it can carry a weight capacity of 22 pounds as far as base weights go, which is pretty high. I mean, most of your backpacking gear nowadays is fairly light weight. It might not be ultra light. Uh, so getting a base weight of 22 pounds is pretty reasonable even on a budget. And an overall carrying capacity of 42 pounds, which is great for me, especially as much as I keep piling camera equipment on. I like that Adam Packs has so many customizable options with their packs, not just the Mo. For example, the sizing of your torso and hip belt, so it's not just a a medium, large, whatever, you get to select those things separately based on your measurements. They've got all sorts of color options for different areas of the pack. You can opt for pockets on the shoulder straps, a bottom pocket, a hydration port, etc. So this is potentially going to be a very different pack depending on the person ordering it and their personal preferences, which I kind of like. After selecting all of my preferred options, the pack I ended up with weighs 33 ounces and the pack itself costs $382 plus I added on two hip belt pockets which at the time cost 46 extra dollars and I paid four dollars for a pack liner. So my overall total was $432 plus shipping. By the way a little side note here if you get to scoping out Adam Pax's website you'll notice that they are based in England, but they do ship here to the US, obviously. And if you are a US customer, you can select an option where their page will actually show up in US dollars, so you don't have to do the conversion. Taking a look at their website today, it looks like the pack, like the base pack itself, is $52 cheaper, so $330. For two hip belt pockets, it's now $38 instead of $46 and a pack liner right now today would cost you $3 instead of $4. So if I got the same exact pack today, it would be $371 plus shipping. So basically, if I would have ordered it today instead of when I did, I would have saved $61. I assume at this point it is apparent that the Mo is definitely not in the budget category of packs. So it really comes down to a pack that costs this much. Is it worth the extra dollars for added comfort, added features, etc. So let's get into that. First on the surface, I really love the look of the pack that I selected. I've been kind of into this black and uh, bluish greenish color for a little while now. It's kind of a thing. And I like knowing that my pack will kind of stand out in the crowd, but I don't really like girly colors that much. I mean, I guess the bluish greenish kind of is, but having a pack that you select different colors and it's going to look different than everyone else's on a trail like the AT, for example, is really convenient, especially when you're in a trail town. You're outside a restaurant and they require you to keep your pack outside. There is a chance that somebody could grab up your pack if you have the same exact pack and walk off with it. Or, you know, you might spend a while digging through trying to find your pack, whereas if you have something that's like, boop, you can immediately see it and pick it out of the crowd, 
it's convenient and you know you just have something different than everyone else and maybe you get into that like I do. The Mo feels very durable. That's something I noticed when I first opened it up out of the box. Feels just well made and a quality pack. The overall comfort of this pack was pretty decent considering how much I weigh down my packs and knowing that it is still very much a lightweight pack. The shoulder straps and hip belt are well cushioned especially for a lightweight pack. There are packs that have much more cushion and bulk to them, but of course they're gonna be heavier. So it's got that good middle of the way Goldilocks thing, if you will. The closure on the top is a Y strap, which I like just in case you are wanting to go somewhere where you need to carry a bear canister that tends to hold the bear canister on much better than just a one single strap. One of the customizable options of the pack, like I mentioned, is shoulder pockets. I ended up ordering it to have a shoulder pocket on either side. I couldn't use one of them because my Peak Designs clip had it squished down, but I got two just in case I wanted to let somebody borrow the pack or if I decided to sell it in the future. But I really liked having those shoulder pockets or at least the one that I got to use for my cell phone or for my DJI pocket to have quick access to a camera if I wanted to record something just walking down the trail. I like having something boom right there that I can quickly access. Also, I opted for the pocket on the bottom of the pack and I absolutely love that. I wish every single pack had the bottom pocket, but especially because my hip belt pockets have begun to fill up with little cameras or tripods or doodads and sunscreen now that I'm trying to actually take care of my skin. So I have kind of infringed upon my snack space. Having that bottom pocket gave me more storage that I could access while moving down the trail because I like to snack a lot while I'm hiking. While we're talking about pockets, the hip belt pockets are very spacious on this pack, which I appreciate, especially since you pay extra for them. You also have the option to select which type of outer pocket you would like the outer pouch. I went with the mesh because they said it would give you five liters more of storage space. I don't really like mesh on the outside of a pack. Just it looks more cluttery to me seeing all the items in there, even if you try to organize it, which I don't spend a lot of time on. I do understand that the pro of having the mesh is you can see the items and know where to dig to get certain things. But if I had it my way, I would like it to be solid and give me the extra five liters but of course um, the way it functioned was more important to me than the way it looked but if you're the opposite they do have the Dyneema stretch pocket option on the Mo. The cup holders on this pack are two and a half liters volume a piece so it's a lot of room for water bottles and I really love that they're deep and they can be cinched down easily while you're walking down the trail. So that way you don't have to deal with water bottles flipping out. I just, that's a pet peeve of mine. I didn't really use all of the bungee cords that are on either side of the pack and also across that big pocket, but there is a lot of clothesline space there. If you wanted to hang some socks that you've washed up to dry, or if you've got gear you wanna hang on there, I know a lot of people do like a little carabiner with a cup, etc. Another good thing I will say about the Mo is it performed very well in the horrible weather I had in Iceland. It seems like I got rained on for at least half the time that I was walking and I never noticed any significant condensation on the inside of the pack. If any at all, it was just from me reaching in there to get something while my hands were wet. Whereas I could say with my Ohm 2.0 by ULA packs, I definitely would see moisture in there if it rained heavily. But regardless, that's not really a deal breaker for me because I use a pack liner as redundancy and I always will, even if a manufacturer claims that their pack is 100% waterproof because you never know when you're gonna get a hole poked in the side of the pack and you know now your sleeping bag soaked. So anyway, but I do appreciate the redundancy and having a pack that I feel like is waterproof and performs like that. And speaking of the pack liners, when I got the pack liner in from Adam Packs, I was like, what in the world is this? It just felt kind of flimsy and, and not very durable at all compared to other pack liners I had used. But I will report that I've been using the same one for 
over 100 miles and it's held up perfectly so I like that it's lightweight but also durable and finally something that probably won't apply to most people the shoulder straps were wider which I love for comfort but for a peak designs clip I barely got that sucker on there I was able to though so for those of y'all that use them you can make it happen so those are the things that I did appreciate about the mo but there is no one perfect piece of gear because there are always trade-offs so what are some things that i didn't love about the mo if you will first i want a pack to have loops on the bottom so that i can put my shelter my tent in the loops on the bottom and that way i don't have to fool with it every time i'm opening and closing my pack on that strap up top also i don't want to put a wet shelter if it's been raining inside my pack with things that i don't want getting wet even if they are inside of a pack liner so i really like to have my tent on the outside if this pack had loops on the bottom for that even if they were just real thin and little and i know i can modify it but i'm just saying that's one thing that to me would make me like the mo better also i really grew to love the hip belt adjustment that my ULA Packs Ohm 2.0 had. It's just where the hip belt connects to the body of the pack. There are straps on either side that you can tighten and it just kind of helps hug your hips and really secure the pack to your back. I, I, I can't describe it. When you feel it, you're like, oh. So that's something that I do wish every pack had. As far as comfort goes, I debated on hip belt size because I was kind of right there in the limbo between a medium and a large. I guess I got them childbearing hips. So I was going to bump up to a large, but then ended up staying down with the medium. So the hip belt pockets, because they didn't stretch around closer together, they kind of hung out on that ilium bone a little bit more, like the edge of them. It just wasn't as comfortable as I feel like it would have been if I'd had a large. Now, I can't confirm that because I haven't tried it with the large, but I will likely order the large hip belt and use that in the future to see if that helps the comfort level. Something that was a little frustrating to me, the hip belt pockets, the way they connect to the hip belt itself, it's just like this little hook thing. Mine kept popping off and I'd have a, a dangling hip belt pocket it was just something I had to adjust while I was going down the trail several times. So maybe if there was just a different way it connected, it would hold on better. So to sum it all up, while I do love the Mo EP60 and I think it's a great pack, it's made well and has some features that I really enjoyed. I'm not sure that it's necessarily worth it to me with my personal preferences to pay an additional $111 as far as what pricing would be today from the ULA Pax Ohm 2.0, $260 to Adam Pax the Mo EP60 at $371. I'm not sure as far as comfort goes that it's better than my ULA Pax Ohm 2.0. In fact, I think it's not quite as comfortable, but until I get that large hip belt and give it a go, then it's really hard to say if it's the design of the pack and how it fits my body or if it's just I didn't select the right size hip belt. Anyway, thank y'all so much for recommending this pack for me to test it out. And if any of y'all have ever used Adam Pax's packs, especially the Mo, I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. I know some of y'all have contributed that in the comment section of other videos, but since this one is specifically on this topic, then it would be good to have it kind of all in one place. So somebody interested in it, would have several different opinions, not just mine. If you have any questions that I didn't answer about the Mo EP60 today, feel free to leave that in the comments also. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and we will see y'all next time.